Happy Saturday, everybody. Welcome back to another rule book run through. Today, we are looking at Moons of Eridani by Canner Cooper Ryder. Um, and we're going to take a look at his rule book, uh, Cold, see if we can learn the rules just from the rule book, if we feel confident that we would be able to play this and that everything would make sense. Uh, Canner's going to be here live with us. We've got Derek here, we've got Chris here. So we'll get some uh, notes along the way and uh, hopefully make the rules even better. Um, but let's start by just talking about. What are we looking at today, Canner? Tell us about your game. What is it? Kind of like, what is it about? Who's your target audience? And where is it going? Are you pitching, self-publishing, submitting to contests? Where? Who's going to be reading this in the near future that we should be thinking about as we're going through? All right, yeah. Uh, yes, Moon to Gardani is a competitive explore exploit spatial puzzle game. Players will navigate their two spaceships through Iridani's lunar system, trying to be first to reach the deep space portal while collecting at least 15 victory points. The board is different every time and reveals as you go. Your two spaceships move in different ways, and players will simultaneously plan and then simultaneously execute their moves. Each player starts with an asymmetric ability, one secret mission, uh, which earns the victory points if you meet its condition at the game end. Additional victory points are earned by collecting more missions and by being the first ship to reach the moon moon spaces with enough resources of a certain type. Uh, will you outmaneuver your foes en route to the portal or eat their space dust? So that's the kind of back of the back of the game. Uh, description. Um, so the target audience, basically it's like a middleweight strategy for players to target the people for games. Um, it also has a solo and co uh, cooperative mode for folks who like that. And then, yeah, right now I'm pitching it and I'm also, I'm in uh, I was in Ion Awards uh, contest and also in that Lord Edison contest. So just kind of, and it could, you know, I, I could go anywhere with it, but at the moment, uh, trying to pitch if possible at the publishers. Super. All right. Well, let's jump right in. Um, so this is Moons of Aridani. So what, uh, if you haven't been to one of these, how this is going to work is I'm going to kind of read this from top to bottom. Uh, I'm going to pause between sort of each section so that everybody else who's listening can weigh in. I'm probably going to be asking a lot of rhetorical questions out loud because I want you to hear what I'm thinking as I'm going through. Um, so I might ask a question that doesn't necessarily mean I want the answer. Let me struggle and figure out a little bit. But if I do have a question that is just I have no idea what's going on, I'm going to say, Canner, uh, tell us what's going on here. Uh, and we can do that. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. Moons of Eridani, designer Canner Cooper Rider, Cooper Rider, sorry, Sunnyville, California, with your contact information. Excellent. Especially if you're going to be pitching this game. It's nice to find that. I like you've got your game stats up front. Mm -hmm. One to six players, 45 minutes. Is it 45 minutes regardless of player count? Yeah, I guess you got that simultaneous yeah. play yeah, in there, so that's okay, nice. Play. Okay. Moons of Eridani is a competitive simultaneous play explore exploit game. A solo and cooperative mode is available. You are an Eridani Exploration Guild member, seeking access to the Deep Space Portal. To gain access, you must fly a spaceship from your home planet of Eridani to the portal and have at least 15 medals. Medals, okay. I'm not sure if those are points or something I achieved yet. You can earn medals by interacting with Eridani's moons and by completing secret missions gained on your voyage. To do this, your two spaceships... Just fly a spaceship. Okay, so I have two spaceships. I got to get one of them to, from Eridani to the portal. A capable cruiser and an agile scout will need to gather resources in conquering, settling, and harvesting, and grab moon and mission tiles before opponent spaceships do. Players plan their spaceship moves in secret simultaneously and then execute them simultaneously, exploring a randomized map that is gradually revealed. Okay. So this feels very cell sheet language, almost. Like, I'm getting a, an idea of the... Uh, mechanisms and the themes kind of in a nice soup. I'm almost tempted to sort of like split those into two. Um, so you're just talking about the theme, the inner world, um, sort of narrative text that we're in space, we're explorers, we've got spaceships, we're trying to get to Eridani with metals, and we're going to do that by accomplishing things. Then like the maybe a new paragraph and talking about like simultaneous play, like you know, randomized map, whatever that looks like. So, because I think I kept going back and forth, like medals is medals points, um, are missions like objectives, or it's just kind of like a tile that you're picking up that's called a mission. So I think if those were separated out a little bit more, I might be grasping it. I'm getting sort of like the aura of what the game is, but I'm not exactly sure what it looks like um, yet. Uh, anybody else have questions about the introduction so far? Or comments? Yeah, honestly, it reads well. Um, 
my my own personal sort of one breath rule. The sentence that starts to do this, um, your two spaceships, a capable cruiser, that sentence feels a little bit long. I might suggest breaking that up in, into two. Um, maybe maybe right after settling and harvesting period, comma, grab moon and mission tiles before opponents' spaceships do. What yeah, so it's kind of like you can get points in three ways or however many ways there are, like period. And then like you could do this or you could do this or you could do this. Something like that. Anybody else have comments about the uh, objective of the game or the introduction of the game? Okay, cool. We're yeah, I, I, oh, go ahead, yeah, Derek. Probably some of it would need, I would reward a little bit of it. Like the one, cool. like, I don't know, I mean, I don't know if we're being nitpicky, but um, like, for example, in access, you move a spaceship from Bernani to the portal. And, but it's like, you can kind of break. I don't know. Gotcha. Don't know yeah, we do, do have longer sentences. Something I used to do in journalism class, actually, is actually put a, a an enter between each, um, I don't know if I could do that. Enter between it's each like sentence. Or I'm on the is, wrong computer. Part of it <laughs> is, um, you know, you say and have at least 15 medals, even though it's prefaced by you need you need that to gain access to the portal. Mm -hmm. But still, when you read that long sentence, you're like, well, what I at what point do I need the 15? I don't know. Yeah, it's kind of, sure. My brain kind of processes it. I had to kind of jump back and say, oh, to gain access. I guess that's like. To gain access. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, you're you're seeking access to the deep space portal. To get access to the deep space portal. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I'm just looking at the right, length yeah. of all these sentences. We got some long, long, long sentences where sometimes if you want to punctuate that with a shorter sentence, that helps the player sort of uh, relax and reset to sort of digest and then those different also concepts. Like, and then also, like, to gain access, you have to fly to it. Well, yeah, that's kind of like a given, isn't it? The, the portal is the same thing as a base portal. So, in access, I think it's kind of you could say you start from your home plan, but like it's kind of it's obvious that you got to go to right, to to access it. I don't know. It just seems a little. But anyways, sure. Yeah, yeah. So maybe more something that could be a little bit more compact. All right, let's move on to the object of the game. So the first player to get one ship on the portal and have 15 or more victory points is the winner. Okay, so victory points, are victory points the same as uh, medals, Canner? Yeah, yeah, they are. Okay. <laughs> I should have a little picture there, but yeah, right, I could have said medals also. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, and that's why, like, usually when I'm writing rule books, we kind of do, like, here's thematic and then here's... The technical so we can kind of like get it in our imagination but then let's jump right into what does that actually mean in terms of like points and objectives and things like that okay so but i think we've got it so our goal we've got two ships we're going to get one of them to the portal with 15 victory points in hand and there's going to be these different ways we can collect victory points uh sort of resources settling harvesting those sorts of things all right let's look at the components 18 plus three okay five six player expansion shown in parentheses okay so 18 ability guards, plus 3 for the expansion, 86 tiles, plus 37 for the expansion, 4 shipboards, 4, four plus 2, 6 moon boards. Oh, I see. There's 6 moon boards, 4 for the base, and 2 are for the expansion. 6 move boards, 4 for the base, 2 for the expansion. Yeah, it's inconsistent how this is listed here. 15 plus 6, 21. Yeah, so maybe it would be better to say 21 map boards and then parentheses like 15 regular slash 6 advanced or something like that. Because this is a little bit of a... starting to look like algebra here. Um, screens and player aids, scout ships, and resource cubes. And there's kind of a laundry list here too. I wonder if some of these are going to be player pieces. Like if the thing, the things that all... Call, like I'm seeing purple here. Like all... Oh, here we go. Okay, pick a color. These are all my player pieces. Okay. I almost want the pictures of stuff um, before 
we talk about setup step one, because um, as we've seen in other weeks when I'm reading a rule book, when I have a question about what something is, I sort of like go up, oh, it's that thing, and come down. So just having that picture of what all they are is great. So this is kind of like a mix of your components less sort of bleeding into your setup pieces. But let's let's see if we can get through it. So each player takes the following. Pick a color and take the pieces below. Put extras back in the box. One space, one scout spaceship, which looks like an octagon or like a hex hex cylinder. One cruiser spaceship, one move board, one move screen, and one player board. Bottom row indicates player color. Okay, so the purple player takes the following. Okay, I could probably find those things in the box. Step two, grab these move tiles. So this is what a move tile is. Yeah, here up here I would like to see like a, you know, like a little hexagon symbol. Oops. It helps if I'm on the right computer. Sort of like a hexagon or some, some indicator, unless you can just put the pictures of them. Grab these move tiles, put extras back in the box. Two basic scout move tiles. One scout special move tile. Two cruiser basic move tiles. One cruiser special move tile. These are very long um, names for components. Okay, so we get a sp scout spaceship, two basic moves, and two special moves. Are those identical for all players, Scanner? Yeah, same for all players. Are they colored? Uh, yeah, the, well, the scout, the special ones are gray, and the, the regular ones are white. But they're, they're gotcha. not colored right now. They're all just either white or gray. Gotcha. I almost wonder if it would be streamlined setup if the if you if there's enough for all the players if they could the starter ones could have like a purple in this case like a purple mm -hmm. border so you can just take all the purple stuff, right? Yeah. Maybe. Okay, and I like I like that uh, from usability standpoint. I see you've got the spaceship is octagonal and the moves are octagonal and the cruiser spaceship is square and these ones are square. Cool. If you do eventually put uh, more of a uh, pictorial list of components up top, which I'm finding myself wanting a little bit more, I would kind of like align these two. So you have like your um, your scout spaceship and your scout move tiles, and of which there are these two types, and your cruiser spaceship and your cruiser move tiles. So you kind of already earlier get to see the association between those two different kinds of shapes. And yeah, I would consider maybe color coding these. Just to make things easier. Okay, so I'm opening the box. I want to be purple. Here, I'm going to grab these things. All right, step three. Take three player abilities. Player ability cards, I guess, and choose one. Take two missions and choose one. Put those not selected and the remaining player abilities back in the box. Okay, gotcha. Okay, so that makes sense. I could probably tell from these what those things are. Okay, setup map. Three to four player map is shown. C256 player setups in appendix. Okay, locate the map tiles. So we're going to start by building outer space, it looks like. So setup, locate map tiles. Portal board, portal is in the middle. Okay, so this must be the portal, front and back. One space resource board. Dark moon is in the middle. Okay, Aerodoni board, Aerodoni is in the middle. Start resource boards with missions. That one doesn't have anything in particular in the middle, so I'm not exactly sure how I would find it. Six Aerodoni space board boards, front and back. Does the back actually look like this? Like it's a white thing that says Aerodoni space on it, Canner? Uh, right now, it could be something else, but yeah, that's all it is. Oh, okay. <laughs> And four portal space boards, front and back. Okay, so these ones have white backs, so those should be easy enough to find. They literally say what they are on them. And I can kind of see, like, these two tiles look very similar to me, so I'm not sure if I would be able to uh, differentiate the two of them. Oops, a second. Yeah, that would be my one concern. So we're setting, okay. So differentiating these might be a little tricky. I guess they're double-sided for randomization purposes. Is that right, Canner? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, I yeah, can probably figure out which are which. The oh. trick is there's five double... There's, um, right, so there's the ones that have the pieces in the center, and those star resources boards are the only one that don't have anything 
special about them, but every other one is sort of findable. <laughs> I don't know a good way to make those findable. Like besides, they're the ones that don't have the feature described on the other five. <laughs> how many of these are there? Like how many are there? Only two. two? Okay, so yeah, okay. And there's, two resource boards. and there's two portal boards and two resource boards and two Iridani boards. Uh, no, just one portal board front and back, one resource board, one Iridani board, and then two star resource boards. Oh, okay. It does say that. It does say one right here. Okay. As I was looking they're, at they're this, like I just personally got overwhelmed. Like, okay, I have to look through all the tiles. There are 86 plus 37 tiles and find the portal board. But there's only one of them. That seems like it might be a yeah. lot of things to look through to find it. I wonder if there's a way to color code or just make it a little bit more distinct. This yeah, is not a, a rules thing, but this is just a sort of a usability thing. Space board with the dark moon in the middle. Start resource boards. So there's these one, two, three, four, five, uh, nine, fifteen. Is that fifteen tiles that are special out of the uh eighty-six tiles, and these are the same tiles we're going to use to set up every game, right? Yeah, the, the 86 tiles are, are like just small tiles. These are board, I'm calling these boards, but maybe I, yeah, I should have called oh! these locate the map. To be consistent. Okay, yeah, so I the map tiles are all the same size and they're the only components in the yeah. game that are this size. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. I call them that board. <laughs> so this would be where, like, the components thing would be nice to have to know right away that the map boards are this big and the the whatever other things were going to be f or whatever tiles oh wait so okay 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 so these aren't tiles these are here we go here we go here's why i'm confused because we have tiles here and then we have map yeah. boards so there we go so we're locating the map boards we're not touching the tiles yet okay that's where my mind went oh my gosh that's a lot of tiles yeah so the consistency, here's an example of where consistency is really important. Let's call them the same thing. So let's call them map boards here when we're talking about map boards. So we know we're not looking through tiles. And, and those and those are the map boards that you're talking about in for that? The components. Yeah. Yeah, this is all the map boards in the game are shown there. I don't I don't know uh, you know if you would want to do this, but I I could be wrong, but um, I would probably even say portal board, one space board. There, I don't know if that'd be too hard. Somebody with the front probably would be good to do that, but I don't. Mm hmm. Uh, hold on, guys, one second. I've got a. We just got a water delivery, and I got a PR guy, so I will be right back. Oh, you got it. Okay. Never mind. All right. Yeah, I, we're, you cut it out a little bit, Derek. Um, but yeah, I think pulling these out earlier in the game and differentiating them earlier would probably save a lot of work. All right. Set up the map tiles. Arrange the portal space resource, Eridani, and Eridani resource boards. So I would, if we're talking about these boards above, I would say, like, locate these, then find the map tiles from above and She's doing, uh, set them... Okay, hold on a second. I can't concentrate. Hold on a second. <laughs> All set? Thank you. Sorry, I just can't concentrate. All right, I'm back. There's just too much going on here. All right, so we're going to find all the map tiles and we're going to set them up like this. So this is interesting because, okay, so we got the the white Iridani space tiles and the white portal tile set up like this. But there isn't any tile that looks like this that says Iridani resource and is black on the back. Is there, Canner? No, I was just trying to label those, but yeah, oh, okay. yeah I guess that's confusing. <laughs> yeah, so it's one of them. So that's why I was asking about this one, because this one almost doesn't look like uh, it's designed. Right? So, and there was another rule book I was looking at recently where it was hard to see what was the component and what was the notes in the rule book because they use the same like text for the rule book and for the component. And sometimes just having that differentiated makes you, makes it easier to point out, oh, that's a component. Oh, this is a label for a component. So I would actually picture the map tiles here and then label them 
like out to the side so you would have actually the resource tile pictured as it actually looks in the game. And then you could have something that says, uh, and it's actually Eridani board, right? That would look something like that. So that they can make, sort of like, make the picture look like the picture. Uh, and know exactly what it's going to look like. Because otherwise they have to sort of remember that it doesn't look like I have that. One, I have a full picture below, but I realize by the time you get there, you may already be confused. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, here. Okay. Yeah. And you know what? I would almost just do something else with the backs because it looks so... It almost doesn't look like a component. It's, it's giving me pause every time I see it. Like, this looks like a label pasted on it. So... Because those could easily be, um, and it's it's representing an empty space, right? I've so lost maybe... audio. Is anyone is Emily muted now? Yeah, she's muted. Okay. Oh my um, gosh, how long have I been muted? I... <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, I was saying I would consider maybe doing a different design on the backs of these because it looks so much like a diagram and not like a component. And if they're meant to represent sort of empty space, like outer space. You could have like a mm -hmm. black starry background or something that looks like empty space that might be a little bit clearer. Does that make sense? Yep, makes sense. Okay. Cool. All right. So the other thing I'm seeing is that this is oriented this way vertically and this is oriented sideways. So not only am I having to like permutate in my head from here to looking at here where they're labeled differently, but then I'm also having to rotate it in my head to see it on the board. And this is actually fairly clear here. I wonder if you could omit this diagram here and instead blow this one up a little bit um, bigger and label it that way. So we don't have different versions of the same thing. All right, so we got our stuff. We can identify most of it, but not all of it. Then we go into setup, we're finding the map tiles, we're putting the map tiles in this arrangement to randomize them. Um, put the mission and moon tiles on the map. Is the center area the map? So we're setting map tiles and then I guess what we're creating is called the map. So put the moon and mission tiles on the map as follows. Note when placing tiles, do not put tiles on any icons. Let's say four, five, or six if there are fewer Players in four, five, or six. Okay, put mission tiles face down atop every space that shows a mission icon. Put red tiles. I'm going to have to jump past because I don't know what this means. Okay, red hostile moon tile. Front, back. Hmm, put mission tiles face down. What are mission tiles? Let me find a mission tile. So I'm not seeing a mission tile. Let me go back up and see if I can find out what a mission tile is. I don't know what a mission tile is. Hmm. Oh, here we go. Here are the mission tiles. These almost look like map tiles, but I guess they're much smaller than map tiles. Okay, so we have mission tiles face down atop every space that shows a mission card. I almost want an example of that. So, what's a space that shows a mission card? I'm not even sure what a mission card would look like. So this is a mission card. It's got a little astronaut with a flag on it. So we're looking through here. To, oh, I think I see. It's very small, but I think I can see. Is it right here, Canner? I see. I think I see a little astronaut. It's very tiny with a five plus here. Is that what we're looking for? And we would put five of those tiles right here. Uh, yes, correct. Okay, so I figured it out. <laughs> it took me a while to figure it out, but I figured it out. Um, okay, so put mission tiles. I would almost like put a picture of those face down atop every space that shows a mission icon. Hmm. Yeah, I would even, like, let me take a, oops, I gotta take a, on the other computer, let me take a screenshot of that, pop it in here. So I would, like, picture an actual tile, one of the tiles with your spaces on it, and the little, I'm just gonna use, I wouldn't literally do this, but I'm just going to um, pick a star here. Let's imagine this is your little uh, astronaut guy. And then I would take an astronaut tile and actually illustrate. This is like a show instead of tell thing, right? So 
So I would tell me what to do and then show me what to do. So I would show, oops, this going here. And if this has a two in it, I would like take an example like there and say that these are going there. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah. So then we can say, put the mission tiles face down on top of every space that shows a mission icon. And we're putting the number of them on there. Okay. Put red hostile, red slash hostile moon tiles, blue harvesting moon. So is it a red hostile moon tile or is it a, is it a hostile moon tile and all hostile moon tiles are red? Canner. Yeah, it's the second one. <laughs> Okay, so when you say red hostile moon tile or green settling moon set, settling moon tile or blue harvesting moon tile, I'm thinking there's multiple types of harvesting moon tiles and I'm only trying to find the blue one. So I would say like hostile moon tiles, paren, red. Um, or just show them. Show them here because otherwise I'm getting confused. Okay, so put the hostile moon tiles, which are red, and the blue ones and the green ones face up atop all moon icon spaces that match the moon's color. Who? That is a <laughs> thing, uh, a, an artifact, I think, from something. So I would show, show the same thing. And actually, maybe you can pick one perfect example of a map board, if that's what we're calling them, and show all the different things going down on them. So you could... Mm -hmm. uh, so if this was a, uh, what's a red? A red hostile moon. This could be a red hostile moon. And then you could show the red hostile moon tile. Again, like... Oh. going on to that. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Blurb. Google Drawings is fun. Yeah, I would just, that that would instantly, in one little space, in that much real estate, would say, oh, for every tile, look at the shapes on them, find those shapes, and put them on the tile. And then disregard yeah, the good. ones that say 4, 5, and plus, if there are fewer players than 4, 5, or 6. Backing up again into like game design mode, if there are five and six player expansion and four, five, and six tiles, I wonder, I just wonder, and maybe this isn't possible because I don't know your game well enough, if those tiles could just be taken out of the game so you don't have to worry about ignoring something, but literally it just doesn't exist if you're playing with that many players. You know what I mean? Yeah, right now the start board and the the two boards next to it, the Iridani board and the two boards next to it are, are shared and either the they go up to six players. So I mean in theory you could have those boards only have four plus on them. And then if you get the expansion, then you get new ones that have the fives and sixes on them. Right now yeah. it's just yeah, that's one what I'm thinking. Board. Or if you had like a uh you know, like a like a two to three player side of the since these are double sided anyway. And I know like for maximum randomization you probably want all the options. Yep. But if you had like a four to five or four to six or whatever player side of that board, then you could just set it up and instead of having to pick this one or this one and this one or this one, you just pick the ones that's right for your player count and then you put the stuff mm -hmm. on them yep. and you don't have to worry about ignoring anything. I think that would streamline things a lot. But again, that's like not me critiquing the rule book. That's me more thinking about the design and yep. how the design can take some of that complication out. Okay. So I'm going to find the tiles that are appropriate for my game. I'm going to make them in this arrangement for the map. Then I'm going to find all the little bits and put them on all the little spaces according to the number and put the rest of them near the board. Doop, doop, doop. I got that right so far? Yep. Okay, cool. So, and again, like this could be gestured to um, and labeled this way so it's easier to do. Okay, put resource cubes beside the map. Finally, if any players grant some useful or additional... Tiles take those. So these are two different steps. Put the resource cubes beside the map. That's very clear. Oh, and these, okay, and these cubes correspond to the moon types. Why, do pur why are purple ones orange? That seems strange. Yeah, that, that's a typo. That should say gold. Sorry. <laughs> gold. Yeah. Okay, but the gold are on the purple moons? No, sorry, that was just a total typo. Gold is just a totally special resource that I'll describe later. <laughs> I think oh, okay, I was copying okay. the moon from the moon and, and, and realized oh, okay. the one. Okay, but the red one, the red cubes go on the red, you harvest red cubes from the red moon, and you harvest green ones from the green moon? 
or put them on there? You, they're somehow associated. Yeah, you, yeah, they're associated. You use them on the moons. You don't. Okay, and the, the blue ones, but the dark moons don't have any. Right, right. They're they're special. Okay. Again, backing up to game designer mode. If these are all, if these three components function in a similar way, it makes sense that they're the same shape. If this one's an exception, maybe it should be a different shape to intuitively show that these. This is not just the same as these ones. These are a little bit different. Just as a suggestion. Okay, place all spaceships atop the Eridani space. The complete setup for four to five players is shown in the following image. Where are the spaceships? Let's see if we... Okay, Eridani space. Atop the Eridani space. These all look like Eridani spaces, but I don't see spaceships. Oh, this is the Eridani space. Hmm. So it's the Eridani space of the Eridani space board. Is that right? So That's it's right. Yeah. It's I just realized that was yeah. yeah <laughs> so we got we got a, a space game with lots of spaces in them and tiles that are called yeah. space space tiles. <laughs> so um, we might want to look at the terminology there. Okay. So on the Eridani space, what if we called that like the home planet space? Or something like that. If that's what that's meant to be, that's that's home. It's the home yep. planet. That might be yep. least confusing. Okay. So, we've all taken ability cards. We've all set up our player areas. we put our spaceships on our home planet. We've got the moons that are populated, I think, though it's a little bit hard to see there. The moons have all of their things on them, and we've got cubes nearby. Okay. I think we can set up. We've got the board set up. It took a while to get there, but we've got the board set up. Okay, game flow. The game, and anybody else want to uh, comment? Uh, Derek, I guess um, Chris jumped off. He's got something else at 11. Um, or his time, whatever time it is there. Uh, but Derek, did you have anything else to add about the uh, steps? Uh, I, I did want to say that. Next chat as well. I'm sorry, the what? The text Get... chat. Oh, the text chat. Yeah. Treehouse chat. That works, so. Oh, okay, I gotcha, I gotcha. So you're, and, you're um, just perfect. listening. Okay, I won't put you on the spot then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so, game flow. The game involves a series of rounds each with a planning phase and three move phases. Not four phases, but a planning phase and three move phases. Okay? During the planning phase, players secretly program, not plan, but program, how to move their two ships. Rounds continue. Okay, and then I was expecting, like, and then the next three phases are blah, blah, blah. Oh, I see. So you have a planning phase, and then you, so it's plan, and then move, move, move. Is that right, Canner? Yep, that's right. Okay, so that's why it's not four phases. There's planning phase, and then three move three times. During the planning phase, please secretly program how to move. And then I kind of want to say, like, and then you get three yeah. moves. There rounds move continue. Phase. Yeah. Yeah, and then rounds continue in this way until the players win. I would also not number these because these sort of imply that these are steps. Because these aren't really... Mm -hmm. I mean, they are in order. During the planning phase, and then... And yeah. then, so I would add something, and yeah. then they move, and then rounds will continue this way until play ends. So I won't make. Yeah, that I think I have numbers exactly. of bullets throughout. I should get okay. rid of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the difference. So talking about the difference between numbers and bullets. If something has to be done in order, that's when we should use right. numbers. If it's just something oh. you select from, uh, you can use bullets. If it's a multiple choice, sometimes it makes sense to use A, B, C, meaning you get to pick one of mm -hmm. these things, but you can't do multiples. Um, and a lot of times before you put bullets. People will say, choose one in all caps of these things, or any of these things, or any number of these things, to help clarify. Okay, planning phase. Move screens. I'm going to move my screen. Players erect erect their move screens and place the move board behind it to keep their move plan secret from other players. I feel like that's part of setup. Or am I taking the move screen up and down throughout the game? Yeah, every, every time you show your moves, you have to take it down. And so then you ah, it okay, so it's like a curtain. You do it, and then you say, ta-da. Yep. Okay, move screens. Yep. Also, regarding so a space game with lots of spaces in it, um, we have a move screens 
And I don't know if it's move yeah. as being an adjective, or I guess it would be a gerund here, or if it's a verb, verb, it being yeah. a verb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, again, yeah. maybe something to look at. Players erect their move screens and place their move board behind it to keep their move plan secret from other players. All tiles and resources you have must remain visible to all other players. Players will benefit if they can anticipate their opponent's move and thus... Okay, so this is a, a hint. I like that it's set off a little bit. Okay, so this is how it works, but it's not telling me to actually do that. Players erect their move screens. Yeah, I feel like it should be like, place your move board behind your move screen is the step, the instruction that we're that we're telling people to do. Okay, move. See again now, like, move tiles. I'm going to be moving my screen, then I'm going to be moving my tiles. It's what I read it as. Players place one scout move tile and one cruiser move tile in all three move columns. How can you place two tiles into all three columns. In each of the columns, corresponding to moves they want to ships to make in the first, second, and third move phases, all moves tiles have two different options for movement, one on the front and one on the back. The special move tile for each ship can be used in any phase. Special move. Okay. See example to the right. Okay. Show. Players must play a tile in all six spaces. Okay, so let me see if I can figure that out. So this is phase one. I'm going to move my, uh, is it my cruiser ship to the left? I guess as I'm, right. the yeah. perspective of me facing the board. And then I'm going to move yep. my scout ship toward me. And then I'm going to move my scout ship to the next phase. And then something is going to happen, I think, or maybe not. And then this, I'm going to move there and there. Moons, one, two, one, two, three, stop at the moon. Stop at moons, missions, and resources. Okay, so does that mean if I move three spaces, I can do stuff on the way instead of just jumping right to that space? Yeah, I explain those moves in a moment. But yeah, you basically you you move up to three steps, stopping as soon as you reach one of those spaces. Oh, okay. <laughs> Skip space one. Skip space one. So you're like hopping over a space to get to a space with this one. Correct. Okay, and then moons, moons. minus one. Moons one. I don't know what this moons one means, but I think I'm if I'm just going by the images, I'm moving my spaceship this way. I wonder if uh, have you ever played Onitama? Are you familiar so. with that game? Um, uh, so there's a game called Onitama. Very famous. Here's a good example. Um, the moves. Oops, I can find them. Well, that wasn't very effective. Let me go back. Let me open the image. Any tab. So here, um, uh, moves are shown as the dark color is your starting space, and these are the places you can go. Um, so I wonder if something similar for your game could be mm -hmm. effective, rather than having these things that I'm sort of like uh, moving my head to sort of see and understand. If you had something that looked... Like a starting space, you know, shipping it, and then something like this, and you could even have like, like a problem little. Problem that you have, have to make. Oh, I can't quite hear you, Derek. I'm not sure if we have Derek. At least I can't hear Derek. Yeah. The I think, Emily, the trick is, uh, like, because I, I rotate the arrows to do a bunch of different, to, to show exactly how you're going to move that time. Mm -hmm. And so I'd, if I had a piece like that, I'd have to rotate it also, because I need to be able to, like, the scout ones that are eight-sided, those can be used in eight directions, right? Mm -hmm. So if that, um, if, if what you're showing, if what you're showing could, could be rotated in eight directions, then, <laughs> then it could work. But, yeah, so this could be, so if it was just, that's what I'm saying, like, instead of a, spa, you could have a spaceship. I mean, it essentially shows the same thing. This is good, mm -hmm. but, like, the skip one space is the one where now I have to read it, whereas if I had something oh, like, like this. Oops. Uh-huh. Oops. I've got two computers going, so I'm trying to do one thing on <laughs> the other computer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then you had something yeah, that looked like this, like a hopper sort of space right yeah no that's good yeah sure. I've, I've basically had trouble trying to show these advanced moves forever <laughs> yeah <laughs> they're, so they're both like different that. but they inevitably confuse people so i ended up just using words because i could never come up with a picture that explained both of them mm. in a way that was only a picture 
<laughs> yeah, iconography can be really, it can h- help you a lot if it's just right, but it is like an art of one of those things that if you don't get it right, it's always easier to do it. So again, we're pitching this game, we're publishing, the publisher will probably in their minds be able to figure that out. But intuitively, that's what I, that's how I'm thinking as a player, is I'm imagining mm-hmm. three squares and skipping over one. Okay, yep, but... I like to skip over one. Yeah. Okay, so we've got three phases. We're going to move each of our ships in a different way. I think that's pretty pretty easy. Okay, cruiser moves. The three cruiser moves tiles must be used in the cruiser move row. Okay, that makes sense. A cruiser that tries to use a scat move will find its engines disabled. Okay, that's just thematic. Players may rotate the basic and special cruiser moves in any direction. Okay, this is feeling a little detailed. To me, the fact that you've um, designed your tiles to be octagonal and octagonal is very evident that this tile goes here. You can't put an octagon on a square or a square and octagon unless there's a special switcher thing that you can do. So this might almost be overkill with some of the instructions um, okay. for showing tiling. Okay, yeah. but I think I've understood it. Uh, the scout move tiles must be used in the scout move row. Yeah, like this could be condensed, I think. Players may rotate the basic and special scout move tiles in any eight directions to indicate which horizontal, vertical, or diagonal direction the ship is desired to move. Yeah, I think this is kind of like place a tile there, that's the direction you're going to move in. Would be pretty. And you could even, um, like show this, like show how it's programmed and then show what it implements, and maybe you do show that. Later. The two basic moves are the special moves are so I'm getting a lot of like background information, like an overview information in this section where I'm expecting like steps. So my steps are really put my screen up, put my moves down, and then the second step is program my moves. And you could say like program your moves, abiding by the programming, you know, restrictions or something like that. Best practices shown below. And that could be like another heading with the fiddly bits about cruisers can only go on cruisers. Scouts can only go on scouts. This is what you're actually saying. But I want the face mm-hmm. to be kind of like, put up my screen, program my moves. That's really what I'm doing. Because this is all just yeah, explaining what the moves are. Okay. Players may discuss and negotiate their moves with other players if they want. If you let me get to this moon, I'll let you get also. Okay, so this is like a side note. This is while I'm programming. I might say, hey, that uh, red moon is looking really good over there. Please stay out of my way. um, Because I want to get there. All such players may trade resources. Is this trading resources happening during the planning phase? Is this part of negotiations, Canner? Um... Yeah, it's a good question. Yeah, I mean, basically, anytime you're on a space, you can do it. So you could do it during the planning or during the move phase. Okay. After completing- yeah, that's a relatively recent addition into the game. <laughs> okay. So yeah, so it. I would go through this and say, what is actual, again, like going back to the recipe analogy, like preheat the oven to 375 and then mix together the flour and the eggs and then do this. We don't have to know like, oh, let's talk about why there's flour going into this recipe. We just say, put it in. So I would say, like, get your steps solid and then you can have either your, if it has to come before the steps so they understand an overview of something or if it's a fiddly bit, like here's exactly how this particular move works i would put it after so kind of like but get that really short on the pl- on the plan phase you're going to put up your screen program your moves and then it sounds like lower your screen that is really kind right. of like what the phase is after completing all move tile placements after programming your movement maybe Players should, or programming your ships, players should indicate their readiness by lowering their move screens over the top of their move tiles, keeping them concealed. Okay. Pilots can get, okay, and that's thematic language. When players are ready, the move phases begin. Okay. The three move phases. Okay, so, put up my screen, program my ships, put my screen down. Move phase. Move phase execution. All players result, and I would phrase these all as verbs as you can. Anytime you have like these T-I-O-N um, words, it starts to get very technical. Manual, we're using a, uh, you know, a complex noun here when really what we mean is like, move your ships, right? That's what we're doing. Like the ships are going to fly. All players resolved the first move phase fully, then resolve the, I think it's resolve. 
yeah, the first move, off, yeah. then resolve the second, then resolve the third. Okay. This is very, like, robo-rally, right? So program move and, like, okay, everybody move, everybody move. Each move can generally be resolved simultaneously by all players, but follows a certain order of operations when applicable. Seasoned pilot, yeah. There's a lot of this thematic language that I feel like is, um, to be frank, sort of, like, distracting me, like, annoying me from reading the actual rules. I might find a different way to either reduce it or put it off to the side. The order of operations is as follows. Players slide explore. Players slide their move screens over to reveal only the next move tile for each of their ships. Oh, okay. So we're covering them and then we're revealing them one at a time. Okay. I wonder if that's to help players or if it's because we're hiding information that might make others kind of take that to us. Players slide their move screens. I would just say slide your move screens over to reveal the next move tile. Move both ships by your first. No, 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 no. Okay, then gain resources. Okay, so if I land on a moon with a resource, I get to... As described in upcoming sections. Okay, then interact. There are four types of interactions. When this With the spaceship on the same space, you may trade resources you have. Okay. Okay, so we're all going to move. Then we can all interact, which means we can trade stuff. We can take a mission tile. Place it face down in the mission section of my player board. If multiple spaceships are atop the same mission tile, apply the proximity rule. The player who moved the fewest steps to reach that tile removes a tile. Okay, I could probably remember how far I just traveled. And then you're going to give me an example, which I think I understand. With moons. See details in the moons section. Is that before this, after this? I'm not sure. I might need a page number. With asteroids. So ships end on a move with asteroids. That player discards one resource of their choice if they have any. Daredevil ship captains who brave asteroids feel suffer damage to their ships. Okay, so again, just thematic language. Okay, so so I feel like we need if-then statements here. So, if you land on a space with another spaceship, you can trade. If you land on a mission tile, you get to take that tile. Kind of subsection. If there's a tie, the person who moved with the food. What if there's still a tie? You know, solve that. Okay, and then if you land on a moon, do this. If you land on asteroids, discard one resource. If you land, need to run interaction order. Players should generally interact simultaneously. However, in the rare case when some players want to move, want to wait for other interactions to complete, then the interactions are resolved in order from closest to Eridani to farthest from Eridani. Those with equal distances, spaces from Eridani. Oof. So there's a lot of sort of like double checking. Again, like, going back yeah, a step to, like, design, I wonder if there would be something easy to do, like, the person with the most gold goes, or the person, or maybe there's a player order stack, or something like that. Like, maybe there's a first player I do have a number on the player cards. That's a good idea. Okay. Yeah, yeah I do, yeah, I do have a work. number on every player ability, so I could just say do that order. Yeah, like that. Okay. Take earn mission yeah. moon tiles, including any resource reward. Resource rewards. Okay. So... Board of operations. So I plan my move. I cover them up. I reveal them. I move my spaceship. Depending where I land, I get some some cool stuff. If a ship ends a move phase atop a face down spaceboard, a face down spaceboard, an Aridani spaceboard, one of these white ones. Is that what we're saying, Kenner? Yeah, what any of those space ones. Oh, the ones okay, this is like yeah. I think I see where this is going. So that's an unexplored space, and we're going to be able to flip it. I think. That's intuitively. Right, right. Okay, so it's like a very um, uh, betrayal sort of like where you're exploring a map and flipping things over. Yep. Okay, rotating them so their orange corner points the same way as the orange corner air on the Aerodonny board. Okay, so that's like a true north sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Now place moon and mission tiles atop all pieces with matching icons, unless those icons have a player count on them that is higher than the number of players. So again, here, like we have to read something and then sort of like forget about it and unread about it and I wonder if that could be looked at with the tiles okay so exploring space okay so if we land on something we do cool stuff if we land on an empty space we sort of explore space there and put the stuff on it viewing dark moons if a ship ends on a dark moon in or so these are these are also in order where I don't think they should be in order I think we're just saying you move your spaceships and then depending on your land where you land you do stuff and then have like just the list of like you landed on a moon you landed on this you landed on this and then this equals whatever and you could even um do something like 
Um, it's a very common game language. Let's, let's say you land on a moon space, right? Oops. I'm on the wrong keyboard. Okay, order bring to front. So you land on a moon space. Maybe you have your little cruiser or whatever, your little spaceship. Your spaceship lands on a moon space. Then you could say common game language. You have a colon. Ta-da! And that means you gain... What happens on a red moon space, Canner? Do you get a red cube? Okay. I, yeah, I mean, any, any moon place, any moon space. It'll explain how the moons work, but they all act the same as each other. You need to earn them, basically. You, can't just, you don't just get them. You have to pay for them for, with resources. Ah, okay, so you can trade resources for... Okay, so you have to trade resources for the moon. So I'm not exactly sure what they do, but what I'm getting at is sort of like, do this thing, and then colon, you get this reward. It's a very common right. game language thing, and it starts to give you sort of a vocabulary of that. If this happens, do this. If this happens, do that. And it could be, that might be mm -hmm. overly complicated. You could just say, if you're on... Oops. Oops. Doop, 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 doop. I'm control Z when I'm in control. You could just simplify it to something like this. When you're on this space, you do this thing, trade, whatever. Um, so you might want to look at some iconography there. Okay. Dark moons. Okay, if a space if the ship ends on a move space atop a atop a dark moon and or within one of that ship's basic move step of any dark moons, that player may secretly view the other side of the dark moon. Moving blindly? Okay, I'm going to skip that. Players may view this particular dark moon at any time for the rest of the game. So, do we mark it? I'm curious how you would record whether that dark moon is something you can flip or not. Players who only pass by a dark moon on an intermediate step do not view the dark moon. So how do I remember if I land on a dark moon and I can look at it, how do I remember when I moved away that I saw that dark moon? Is there a token or something that gets put yeah, on there? Good question. I mean, basically, my first thing, my original game was, you, if you see it, you get to look at it, and that's it. And then people would say, people would forget, and I was like, I'll just be nice, and if you've passed it, you can look at it later on our mm. system. And, be, you know, and that's worked okay. I mean, people are like, oh, I passed that moon earlier. I'm like, yeah, I remember you were over there. Go ahead. You're right. You have to kind of, like, ask for agreement from other players if you're going to look at one you're not currently next to. Um, and but, is it only you know, I, I can nice look at it because people. only I passed it? So I've, I yes, have the exactly. knowledge of you that one? It. Yep. Interesting. Right. Okay. Yeah, I, I wonder if there's something that could be put on there to indicate that. Or like a ring that could be put around it or something like that. But I get what you're saying. Yeah. Okay, empty space. Empty space has no tile or resource. Then nothing happens. I would put this one first. So I'm a big fan of this. Like when you have like 10 different options, like by the time you read all the options, um, and you read like a complicated one up first, you're like, whoo, this is going to be a long list of options. So if you do the easy ones first, like land on nothing, mm -hmm. do nothing. Um, if you like land on a space file, explore. If you land on this, get resources. Kind of like order them in terms of complication. Yeah, exactly. uh, Helps a little bit with the yeah, mental load. Sense. Okay, revealing yep, space boards. Sense. If a ship ends on a move, ends a move, atop a face down space board. A face down space board. Okay, an Eridani space, right? This one, one of these white ones, right? Is that what we're calling? Yeah, exactly. Okay, yep. or are these all space boards? See, now I'm getting confused. Are these all space boards? No, these are map boards. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, and it's, it's a portal space, space board. A portal space mm -hmm. board and an Eridani space board are both space boards. Are these both space boards? Right. Anything that says space after it. Uh, yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Again, like I'm thinking like if it was a galaxy with like little stars on it, like I would say, mm -hmm. oh, that's, that's mm -hmm. space. Unexplored space. Something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Empty space. We already talked about empty space, right? Yep. Order of operations. Okay. Resources. So I was 
holding on in my head to like these three things. I'm going to do the planning phase, then I'm going to move three times. So if I'm done talking about the moves, I would say something like that. This You move this way three times in a row or something like that. Then go on to talk about resources. Because I'm thinking that resources is a subheading. Maybe it is. Let's read. Resources are useful for completing some missions and for interacting with certain moons, which require a certain number of different resources of one color. Without these resources, pilots would be limited to spending around space. So... Okay, so if I land on a moon, it, it's probably going to require resources. And this is more information about resources. When a ship lands on a conquering... Okay, I read resource space. Are these moons? I think they're moons, mm -hmm. right? So you're saying if they land on a red moon, a green moon, a blue moon, or a purple moon? Or maybe it's just these three? Uh, no, there's, there's actually resource spaces. Like, uh, your screen's moving around pretty fast. My video is oh, a little sorry. laggy, but the spaces that show the pictures of the resources, which are like like on the, the main setup, like the bottom column, there's a bunch. There's like a gold picture. There's a cow picture. They're hard to see because it's small here, but like. Oh, they show a okay. <laughs> okay. Up front. Um, right in this section where you talk about these resources, mm -hmm. if this yeah. is the representation of the component, if that corresponds with an icon, I yeah. would put introduce those icons up front so that by the beginning of the game, and this might be something that goes mm -hmm. on like the back page of your rule book is sort of like a glossary that has your icons and what all of them mean. But it just it just clicked mm -hmm. for me now that that gold picture is going to correspond to the gold cube and i don't think it should have taken me that long i think it would have been nicer if i knew that right away yeah okay yep, makes sense. okay when you land on a resource space and maybe parentheses like picture 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 that player takes two resource cubes of the associated color and places them atop the associated area of their ship board what are you showing me here i'm not sure what you're showing me here oh these are all things available on red Okay, the red. I'm gonna put this on the left hand side here. So the, le the red planet is going to yield. I'm gonna guess guns, lasers, nuclear waste, bombs, yeah, poison, and some radioactive it's, it's, barrels. It's, um, yeah, the, the red moon requires those red resources to interact with it. Ah, so okay. With each other. Okay, so there's a moon that's a color, and then there's kind of like a resource set. Okay, I see the green one is wood and yep. water and animals and plants. Okay, that makes sense. The blue one is sort of industrial technology, it looks like. I'm getting a flavor. And then the yep. purple yeah, one is carbon. gold. Purple one's gold. I wonder why the purple the gold, the gold, purple one isn't... Why the planet that provides gold yeah, isn't gold. Purple one, I'm just curious. Yeah, the purple one's actually not associated with gold. It's just the other kind, and gold is the other kind of resource. But I see the confusion. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, so again, like this is something that I feel like I should know. Like, here is space. This is the... Eridani Galaxy, or whatever, and it has red planets, and red planets are where you get weapons, and green planets are where you get, you know, um, mm -hmm. natural resources, and blues well, are, are great for technology. For yeah. So yeah. I'm discovering yeah. this. I'm discovering this as I read the rules, but I feel like that, it might be an important yeah, part of sort of yeah. your lore up front, or sort of like a, a pre-game overview. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. Water, and then you could label them, and again, like, show instead of tell. Okay, so you settle on green moons, which provide you natural resources. You conquer red moons, which give you weapons. You harvest... Hmm. You harvest yeah. technology. E either. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Well, one, more, one more time. The, the resources you use on the moons, you don't get them from the moons. <laughs> okay, so you use them on the moons. Yeah. So where do you get them you from? You use them. Yeah, you have to settle the green moon with all these different wood and water and metal and cows. And uh, oh, you, you conquer okay. the red moon using all the hostile weapons. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so where do I get those weapons? Where do I get those resources? Yeah, there, there's all these resource spaces all over the board. I guess I never like point to them and show them. Which I obviously okay, need to. <laughs> okay. So you want to conquer? You want to conquer, settle, or harvest? O maybe there should be a word to encompass all that, like occupy moons. And in order to occupy moons, you get resources. Yeah. How do you get resources? You do it this way. So there's almost like this flow chart of information, and there's like sort of bubbles all over. And I kind of want that. Uh, Ar Aridani Galaxy 101 um, up front so I have an overview of what these things are so I can understand how they interrelate with each other. And we can maybe talk yeah, more about sense. that um, after the call.
Okay, no reach resource. Okay, resources are located where? Oh, leftmost columns are located in the Iridani board. Iridani resource boards and portal boards. Oh my, okay, so. Hmm. Yeah, there's nothing in this board that intuitively tells me that. What things are located where. Yeah, I almost feel like you need like a... A Hitchhiker's Guide to the Eridani uh, Universe, where um, you know where to find what. Like, if you're looking for gold, here's where you might want to look for it. And here's what it might be useful for. Mm -hmm. Something like that. And there's a little bit of a chicken and egg thing. But yeah, that's definitely what I'm craving. Because, like, I'm I'm not going to remember where these are, especially since there's overlaps. The Eridani board, Eridani resource boards, and portal resource boards. And the other ones are the also the Eridani board and the Eridani resource boards. And the portal boards. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of information here. Okay. I mean, I, I almost don't even need to say it, but it's not, it's not critical. It's just for people who want to know where can I find certain things. I wrote it down, but maybe I, maybe it's just too confusing to even write it down. <laughs> yeah, I would you say yeah, because I don't think it. I think it's adding more confusion than it's helping. And if that's and this is something that happens yeah. when you, we play test with game designers, right? They want uh, all the card counts. They want all the things, and sometimes that is necessary, and sometimes it's nice to know. But sometimes it's something you should let the players discover. Like, oh, there's a lot of. Yeah. Whatever cows in this part of space. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, again, I'd like to have to play your game to yeah, know which great. is the right one for you, but it's definitely sort of clogging things up right now. When a ship yeah. lands on a gold yeah, resource space, the player takes one gold resource, which is placed in the associated section of their shipboard. Is this the shipboard? So you put the gold here. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. I like that kind of instruction. When you land on gold, take gold, put it on the gold space. That's really like. Intuitive, no question about that. So those kinds of things are great. Move example. Phase one, white scout single steps directly down. Okay, well, my way. Okay, so we're starting here. White player goes here. See, I almost want, like we have written and then we have showing. You could even show all this. So like the white player moves here and gets coal. And earns two coal. Okay, orange cruiser. Orange cruiser, which is the square one. Um, uh, steps down. Steps down. Okay, skips over, does that jumpy thing. To earn two biohazard resources. Note that even though the orange move board is rotated relative to the map, its move arrows are still followed on the map. Okay, I see. Like, it's, a, again, like, this might be, um, higher up, like, how moving works. It's all relative to your player map. Yeah, it's all it's it's always been a question people have. It's just like if you're looking down at the board from above, all you just you like you're looking down from like yeah, the yeah. lights. You're just like every move goes in the direction that like it's not like your perspective. Yeah. It's just like which way is your arrow pointing? And I've never known yeah, how to yeah. say that clearly. Yeah, I know what you're saying. There used to be that old worm game on computers. Do you remember the game and you played it with the arrows and it made the little caterpillar go around and eat stuff? And you could what is it? Snake. Snake. I guess it was called yeah, nibbles. snake. Nibbles. Yeah, I'm already, maybe I'm sure there's other games, like but you could. There was one where yeah. you were you were the snake at its head, and you were moving left and right. Yeah, and then there was another one where you had the absolute movement or whatever it was. Yeah, I think explaining that, right. and it's it's seeming to evolve. Like there needs to be an orientation to space and what it does. There are resources, there are moons to conquer. There's the things, and then sort of like introduction to spaceships. Like here's how spaceships move. You're mm -hmm. gonna program them and get that sort of stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna the white cruiser and I would if these are A B C I would label them over here real quick. So white scout single steps orthogonally. Put a little A here. Boop. Um orange cruiser steps down, gets two biohazard. White, both move to the right. Okay. They tie. If they cannot agree on one player taking it in exchange for resources, then neither receives a tile and remains on the map. Okay, that's interesting. So you can bribe each other. I like it. Okay, phase yep. two. Orange Scout single steps. Okay. So we're going to continue this a lot. What are we showing here? Two. Oh, I see. Your highlight. These are highlighted here, but not highlighted here. Okay. So you're showing part of a board here. Right. And that's acceptable. Like Did in a final version the of the rule book, I might like gradient out the board to show that you're just seeing part of the board. But I, I get what mm -hmm. you're trying to show here. 
Okay, I'm going to kind of jump through these and assume that they're all, they make sense. You land on a resource, you get two of the resource. You land on a moon, you can conquer a moon. Right now, it looks like we're just collecting resources for the most part. Gold and resources. Yep. And one of them is the mission tile. Okay, so we haven't had an example of a planet yet. Mission score victory points. Okay. Keep tiles hidden. Okay, so these are just, you take them and they're worth points at the end of the game? Mission victory points? If you complete the objective, yeah. yeah oh, like of harvesting blue moons. Ah, harvesting blue moons 2 equals... I might show this differently. I might show this <laughs> as... Okay. Um, I think what you're saying is... Yeah, let me delete on the right computer. Let's pretend this is the the uh, the score for points. And again, I would use the um, hyphen, like one oh, equals so two of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whatever it is, I don't have the points right. But you know, like one moon is going to equal yeah. this. Two moons is going to equal that. Three moons, four moons, whatever is going to yeah. equal this many stars. And it takes it's so obvious um, when you say it. <laughs> and it yeah. takes off um harvesting blue it takes off some of the verbiage so it makes it it makes it easy for you to see it you can even rotate this you know in a direction and kind of still see yeah what it is across yeah. the board it kind so of just language get rid of the words entirely yeah and you can get rid of, get rid of those it's words even, yeah. it's yeah. and if you can get word, yeah. rid of the words entirely and put it in front of somebody and they intuitively know what that means if I collect three moons, I'm right. going to get four medals, whatever that looks. That would be an indication that, cool, then you can strip those out. Okay, and you want to yeah, keep the tiles probably. hidden. Okay, so these, are, these, are the, these are the contracts and tickets to ride, right? You want to get them, you put them yeah. down, and if you do them at the end of the game, cool. Is there a penalty for not yeah. getting them at the end of the game? That's a common question. Uh, I don't think I... There's no penalty. I, I thought I said that somewhere, but I may never okay. say that. Okay, I'm you sure you do, and I'm kind of skimming. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No penalty. Ships arriving there later earn nothing. Let's say mission tile has been taken. Mmm, I see. Okay, that makes sense. And I like that. I wanted to comment on this because I think this is good and this is something that people don't do enough is that the mission tile... Oh, maybe I'm wrong about that. So you have these square mission tiles and they go on these square spaces that yep. are exactly the same size. I would maybe gray those out or something so that nobody looking across the board would confuse that there is a mission tile here. You know what yeah, I mean? Because you stack them up. Well, right, okay. Uh, let me see. Be clear. Well, the, on the mission spaces, there's a little mission icon. It's mm -hmm. like half the size of the mission. And so that, I mean, I've never known what size to make it, but I want people to be able to see it and not miss it when they, because you got to put the tile oh, on Oh, here it. it is. Here it is. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And yeah, you have done that. Icon. Then yeah. you have done that. Okay. Gotcha. Oh, okay, so in the setup, what I'm seeing here is this is actually mission tiles stacked onto the spaces. Yeah. There's, okay. Yeah. yeah. So it did. One mission on. Okay. So that yeah. is that is good because when that's empty, then they're gone. So that's exactly. good. So there's no confusion. Right. Excellent. Good job on that. Okay. Let's see what else we got. Okay, so we got mission spaces. Now we got moon spaces. So let me just look at this. So I'm seeing a blue moon with a red cube. So does this mean, I'm just guessing here, intuitively, that if I land on a blue moon, I can conquer that blue moon with a red cube, or maybe four blue cubes and a red cube? Are either of those right? I'm just guessing. Well, this sort of yeah, four blue, four blue cubes is what you need. You get the metal and the red cube. Ah, okay. okay. So we have a reward of what it yields yeah. and yeah. the cost to buy it. Okay. Right. And so... Following that logic, you would need five green resources to conquer the purple moon, and it would give you two metals and a blue resource. Right. Or blue cube. Blue yeah. cube. And you need five green cubes or five resources. Yeah, five resources. And the, and the key, I'll say, I say it below, but the key, total key is they have to be different resources. <laughs> I, I underlined it in uh, bold a couple times. Super okay. important. <laughs> Because that's why you need okay. cows and lumber and metal, right? So they're okay, so it's kind of like a set collection yeah. of the five. 
Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, you could just get one resource a million times, and it'd be a boring game. You gotta yeah. Like, kind of I am <laughs> a little confused. Um, this red square with the three in it looks very similar to this red square, and this means I'm gaining a red cube. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this means I'm cashing in three red resources. So you might want to look at again. This is like an iconography thing. Um, mm -hmm. Some sort of different icon that represents the resources like maybe they're squares with a red outline or something like that yeah it's tricky because they're both resource right you're using three resources that are red that are cubes and then you're getting you know or you're getting back a red cube <laughs> so they're i mean they're, they're the same thing you're just one is what you're paying and one is what you're getting oh they are the same then okay they are the same yeah yeah so why am i getting confused about Oh, I know why. Okay, so all these things on the map. I'm just putting cubes on here to represent how many guns I have. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Okay, okay, okay. Up until this point, I, for some reason, invented in my mind that there were little square tiles that had pictures of these on them. Okay. I'm understanding now. Okay. Yeah, I need I need to show pictures of cubes getting arrowed onto these things, obviously. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, that would be excellent if you had, you know, that sort of arrow going onto, uh, yeah. onto thing, like something like that. That would be great. Yep, and yeah, you could great. say, you could ha narrate that example, like this player currently has three guns and a waste and a poison, or something like that, mm -hmm. to show mm -hmm. that. Yeah, that would yep. instantly, I would instantly get that. Make okay, yeah, so totally. I'm going to spend four blue resources, and I get a victory point and one red. Okay. That's yep. making sense now. Okay, moon types. I'm going to kind of skip through um, the rest of these. I think we're you've got a lot to work on um, from, from our chat. I don't know if I'll get through the whole rules. So moon tiles with two players. Which players have enough? Okay, basically, if you can't use the moon, you can't use the move. If one... Yeah, yeah you can't interact if you don't have enough resource. Okay, so you can if you can do the thing, you can do the thing, or you can choose not to do the thing. If two of you can do the thing, do the proximity rule, and then if you can't, you probably have to negotiate, right? Or nobody gets it. Correct. <laughs> it's like mom always used to say, like, if I can't agree, then nobody gets it. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Once... Everyone's done <laughs> Work it, work it out. Work it. Make it work. Okay. Yep. Once a moon tile has been taking ships, arriving there later, earn nothing. Okay. Yeah, I'm craving this thing, like, if something's not on the map, take it off. So are moons the same way as the um, mission tiles, in that they don't look yeah. like they're available once they're gone? Yeah, correct. Yeah, they're like a smaller icon. Okay. Yep. Yeah, okay. Cool. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. Oh, one other thing. The um, resources on the map. Okay, you don't take resources off the map. You just sort of like count them with the counters. Everything else, when you're taking it, you're taking it off the map. Right? Right. right. Okay. Right. So, land on a space, take the stuff that's shown on the space. Is that the yep. essence of what we're doing most of the time? Okay. That is the essence, exactly. That was the yeah. <laughs> Land on a space, take the stuff on the space. If there's a tie, you gotta work it out, but basically that's what we're yep. doing. So I think that could become yeah, maybe I should, an I abridged know, version of that, like that up top. So this happens in games, because yeah. your game is a little bit of a heavier game, right? So there's almost like the pre-rules. That's like, yep. it, like the turn order would be like, on your turn, you're going to do these three things. One, one sentence. Two, one sentence. Three, yep. one sentence. One sentence. Each of these things is explained in more detail below. Then you have a heading two that says, okay, here, let's talk about step number one. Let's talk about step number yeah. two. Um, yeah. So in your case, That's it would be like, idea. okay, there's resources. Here's how resources work. There are moons. Here's how moons yeah. generally work. There are cruise ships, or I mean, spaceships. Here's how they generally work, just in a very high level. And then we'll talk more yeah. about them later. And it also kind of like, you know, that whole thing when you write an essay, you say what you're going to say, then you say it, and then mm -hmm. you say what you said. Have you, have you ever heard that sort of like essay format? Like, in this essay, I'm going to explain yeah, one, two, right. three. Yeah. And you explain one, then two, then three, and then you say, yeah, okay, great. in conclusion, one, two, three. Yeah, so something like that. Yeah, okay, game it. end. A player wins if, after any move phase, they have at least one ship in the portal and have 15 plus victory points, including scoring their missions. Okay, victory points. Ha, maybe I missed this. Are victory points only shown on missions, or are there other ways to get victory points? 
Uh, the moons had the medals on them too. So there's the only two ways. Moons and oh, okay. So let me find a moon tile. Okay, so you're going to count up the medals on the moons you've collected and count up the medals shown on the missions you collected. Is that right? Right. Okay, yep. something else just occurred to me about these tiles. Another common game uh, way of showing this. Uh, I'm thinking of things like Archaeology, the card game would be an example. Sushi Go is an example, too. Maybe you know where I'm going with this, where you have, like, two... Oops, wrong computer. You have, like, this is how many moons you have, and that's going to give you, you know, one point... Yeah, I think you showed that on the before, right? You like, like yeah, showed yeah. three tiles with two medals. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you would have like medals up on top. So it's like a, a menu sort of going that way instead of going up to top. That's an mm. option. It's just a familiar shorthand that it's kind of like the colon, like do this, get that, that some people might be able to register more quickly, especially a publisher who's kind of used to that iconography. Okay, so we're okay. at the game end. Okay, so let's take a look at what else we got. Okay, so... Let me just replay what we've got. So, I'm going to randomize this board. I'm going to fill it up with little resources and tiles and things. I'm going to take all my player color stuff. Then, on my turn, I'm going to put up my secret screen. I'm going to tell my spaceships where they're going to go. I'm going to put the screen down, and when everybody's done, I'm going to shift it over, and we're going to move our ships according to the first thing we're going to do. When we land on stuff, we get that stuff. If we both land on stuff, we have to work it out and maybe trade and negotiate and stuff like that. And then we get the stuff. All along this way, we're collecting missions that we're going to use to get those medals. We can also get medals by interacting with moons, which is why resources are important. And when everybody get, when somebody gets 15 points and gets to the portal, so I might secretly have 15 points and start working my way to the portal. People might not even know I'm going there. But once I get there, I can go, ha! I have 15 points. I win the game. Exactly. Is that a pretty good summary? Perfect. Yeah, I should probably have that up front, huh? <laughs> <laughs> it's hard It's hard to do, though. So, so this is really, really important. Like, I find that teaching my game to somebody else and then having them teach it back to me, they can usually mm -hmm. sum it up a lot right. faster than I can. Okay. Yeah, this, is, this, this is feeling like a fun game. Um, I like it. But yeah, some order of information, sort of like summary, then detail, then yep. then, you know, those sorts of things. And giving me like an overview like, the thematic overview at the top sort of gets to what it is, but I'm looking for something that's in between that and the full rundown of every single space you can land on and everything you can do. So that's yeah. sort of like, you're going to be moving spaceships all at the same time. When you land on stuff, you get cool stuff. And all this time, you're trying to accumulate these metals, which you can get by conquering moons and doing this stuff. Okay. Variant. Simple abilities for first game. Instead of choosing player ability... Oh, wait. We didn't talk about abilities. Hold up. I have this ability card. What's this ability card for? I can't quite. I show see. them in the. Uh, I show them in the very back what they all are, but I don't. Oh, like okay. Let's take a look. Yeah. So when can card. I use an ability? Is that does that modify my move? Yeah. Why don't we? Let instance? me show you in the in the back and you can kind of Okay. Missions. Okay, that makes sense. Collect one of these. You know. Okay, that makes sense. Clear abilities. Dark moon lover. Secretly spy. All dark moons gain one VP for five plus dark moon. Tiles. Okay. Cool. Um, at the start of the game, draw to four total missions and keep three in a max player count. Okay, so mission booster. Okay, so these are like power-ups. Yep. I wonder... This looks like the Windows icon to me. Has anybody ever told that before? <laughs> like the window, you know, the old school Windows icon. Um, yeah. <laughs> I almost wonder if these... Are these necessary for the core of the game, or are these like an add-on? Um, yeah, they're basically just to, they're not necessary strictly. I added them later just to make more, you know, even more replayability, right? You're like, ooh, I want to yeah. be that one that does that. Cool thing. <laughs> yeah, so instead of choosing player abilities, I just wonder, again, this is me wondering, and publishers would be different, because you just told me the whole game, but you didn't really mention the abilities, and I wonder if your first mm -hmm. game... You could play it without abilities and still have a consistent experience that's maybe one step back. And then for your uh, yeah, second you game, so rather than presenting it as here's the game, you can also strip the abilities out, maybe explain the first game, and then add the abilities in. Mm -hmm. yep. Might be yeah, might totally be one fair. way to do it. Also, yeah, it works, it works it's, fine without them. <laughs> okay. And also, the nice thing about that is people play the game and say, oh, that was fun. Now let's play it with the abilities. 
instead of maybe having a confusing first game and then having to scale it back and feeling like maybe they're not smart enough for the game, you get that like right. um, short win, like, yeah. oh, we did that. Let's add something else. Let's add something else. Um, yeah, that might be a better it. sort of like customer journey for you. Like make that first game, like knock out of the park. Super fun. Okay, advanced play. Instead of losing one resource when landing on an asteroid, bounce back to the space you came from. When landing on a moon that you are unable to interact, bounce back in the same way. Okay, so it's a less uh, bad feeling thing. It's a. It's actually a harsher. It, this is advanced because this is harsher. Yeah. Like if you land on a moon, you have to fly all the way back to. Where oh, you, came you, you lose a. You lose a space. Okay. It's more like I see what rally. you're saying. So you okay? So you lose. Yeah, so you're not going to lose your stuff, but you get to kind of try that again, sort of speaking. So right. in some ways, it's it's more intense, but some ways it's less penalty because you don't have to go get it's, that thing again. You get to keep your stuff. Yeah, the, yeah. The asteroid, it's like a break even. On the moons, it's way harder because in the in if you play this way, the moons you can't go through a moon that you can't interact with. Like if it's a hostile moon, you're not strong enough. You have to go around it. <laughs> in mm. the beginner game, you just walk right through it, <laughs> and it's easier. Okay, yeah, I see. Kinda... So you see the asteroid and you're like, ooh, I don't want to go there. <laughs> or if it's like a minefield, I don't want to go in there. Got it. Play right. to 18 victory points instead of 15. Okay, that's fine. And then we got cooperative game rules. Okay. And then we've got a lot of player things. Player expansion. So maybe we'll look at this another day. Because we're at uh, 11.30 my time now. Um, but yeah. So I think Derek, Derek is still listening. Feel free to pipe in Derek if you wanted to. Uh, contribute. Um, but yeah, so I would go through, like, just from top to bottom, like, work on the introduction. Maybe there's an introduction, and then there's sort of like a game overview section, which is maybe yeah. three times yeah. longer than the introduction, but much shorter than the rest of the game. The object mm -hmm. of the game is good. I might say, first player to get to the portal and have 15 victory points. I might say, you can earn victory points by conquering moons and gaining missions. Mm -hmm. Something that's a little yeah. bit similar. Yeah. Because there's layers to it, right? You want victory points to get points, you do these things. To get these things, you have to do the resource. So there's kind of like layers. Mm -hmm. um, I would picture all the components, honestly, just to get them all up front. And you could er sort of arrange them so that all the player things are sort of together and all the expansion things are yeah, sort I of kinda, together. I, I like include, shared things. And I included that list. I included that components list just as like a high level. Here's, you know, what you would take to make the game but i i didn't really i'm kind of i mean if i didn't have it i would be basically showing them all right after is what you're you're kind of saying there's so yeah many but i would like to show them. them first it's kind of hard to know but i think i would show them first especially because some of these things have like move boards map boards ship boards there's a lot of these things that are boards that i think maybe are tiles i would look at the the names and the scale of some of those things mm -hmm. um so that when i open the box there's a lot of pieces in this box i can start to separate things out and see what's what. Right, so right, you don't necessarily right. need to know that there's a scout, there's special moves and uh, sorry, see, like scout, basic scout, move tiles, scout, special. So that's a weird thing too. Basic scout, move tiles, and then it should be like special scout, move tiles, but it's scout special, so it flips around. But like, I don't need to know that there's different types of tiles or different types of moons. Just be like, hey, these are the moons. You know, they look like moons. They're different colors. These are the map mm -hmm. tiles. They're all square and they're about this size. Something, again, gotcha. like sort of like overview. Then we can get more specific mm -hmm. into the setup. Like Makes find sense. the moons, then look, notice that they're different colors, and here's where they go. Makes sense, yeah. Yeah. So like all the information is here, but I think it couldn't be sort of like packaged up and curated a little bit better. And maybe what I'll do if I have some time this week or if you want to chat some more, um, we can work on putting together like a one page, like here's the outline of the order that we think they should go in. And then you can sort of like fit things into a different order and add some transition sections that might clean this up a little bit. Yeah, it makes sense. How about, I mean, I really appreciate the, the comments on it. How about, I, how about I take a shot at the overview and I just, I send it to you at some point? <laughs> yeah, that sounds now. good. Yeah, that yeah. sounds good. Cool. All right. So, did you find this helpful? <laughs> I hope, and not too, yeah. not, not too, uh, yeah. ridiculous. Okay. Awesome. All right. Yeah, Anything else? Any other questions or things that people want to chime in with before we wrap up for today? Okay, Derek's got a bunch of comments oh, in the yeah. chat. Yeah. Now, so. Yeah. One thing I kind of want to add is like, um, in your sometimes your environment that you're writing in 
uh, you could take advantage of like Word or whatever um, editor that you're using that uses like headings. Mm-hmm. Is you can kind of you look off to the side and kind of look and see if you're kind of like outlining your um, rules efficiently. Um, if, you know, so this is what um, he's talking about here know. is if you use these yeah. heading things, then it actually creates an outline here for you along the side. So if you do like object of the game, components, we'll call that a two or a three, whatever that is. It starts to form an outline out here, and you can kind of see where things land. And you can also say, oh, like tell that. when, um, so we have setup. So actually you have, Oop. I've got caps locks on. So this would be like setup. Oops, which goes up here. Try not to screw you up too much. Nope, that's not working. I think you have something. What are we in Google me. right now? Yeah. Anyway, so you would have setup, and then underneath setup, you would have um, player areas or whatever you would call that, which would be number two. So, oops, heading two, and then like heading three underneath that. So you still know that you're in setup, but this is a subsection in setup, and you can see over in the outline how this arranges and you can edit these a little bit so maybe you want the player areas to be a little less obnoxiously big you can update mm -hmm. that heading and it updates all the headings but yeah using those heading ones heading two having heading three can really help organize your game and visually give people some sort of like boom boom booms that they can focus on mm -hmm. okay cool go ahead derek sorry i cut you off i know that's it i was just wondering what we're using the i guess when sheets right now <laughs> and i just noticed that there was a chat i haven't used the chat here before so up in the top right there's a little word bubbles and you can see five messages that derek put on there so uh saying each line uh and the one section starts with if you land on a blank you could just say what happens when you move on oh no sorry yeah. this is uh <laughs> from last from week before. Yeah. <laughs> from before okay yeah. um i'm good Okay, general discussion about what tools can we use when rules writing. Sometimes text boxes, so it's easy to move sections. Also use headings in play. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah, Derek, almost like a rule book, like 101, like e creating a rule book in Google Docs and sort of like what should be included and sort of how the formatting should work. That might be an interesting thing to do. Yeah, good idea. Cool. Alrighty. Um, well, we can hang on the line. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the recording today. Is this okay to post on YouTube? If so, give me just a, a thumbs up um, that that's okay. Yeah, go for it. Okay, cool. Alrighty. Well, thank you everybody for attending uh, today's rule book run through. Um, we do these every Saturday now and we do short and sweet play testing on Sunday nights. So you can feel free to check that out. Looking forward to testing your game and playing your game canner and uh, seeing how this comes along uh, in the next iteration. Thanks so much.